Brooklyn Independent Television. My name is Kelly Anderson. I'm an artist and designer living and working in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. My work is very multidisciplinary, so I work in several different mediums. I work in photography and drawing and painting. In design, I do letterpress. I have my own letterpress studio in my apartment. And this machine in particular is from probably 1919. And letterpress is unique in the printing world because when you, when you print with letterpress, you get an image, but you also get an impression. So then when I'm ready to print, I take my paper and sort of get it in the guides. And then, voila! And so my, my work is really all over the place. And it, with each project, I'm sort of dealing with different ideas. But if I step back and try to understand the common themes that run through my work, um, I would say that I'm, I'm really fascinated with different systems of organization. I'm interested in these underlying principles and rules that make a work take shape. So when I'm working on web design, there's always a, a grid underneath these web pages. Going back to my training as in art history, you know, I, I think about my artwork from a formalist perspective. So I'm always thinking about the structure of the composition and how the structure lends to the functioning of the artwork, you know, how it supports the message of the artwork. And so I, I feel like that theme holds my work together. This is a good example of that. This is a card I designed, but it's also interactive. And so as you fold through the frames of the card, it dramatizes the receiving of the card, and then you end up at the beginning, the sort of drosty effect with a card with a card. I, I have a never-ending appetite for images. I look at images all day long. The project really always starts from a conceptual place, and then I start sketching my ideas. So I have about a thousand rough sketches and sketchbooks all over my desk. Um, of these vague ideas, sort of sloppy sketches to lay out a composition. So I've been working on one photo series that involves a mirrored cube. It's this very geometric stark shape that I towed around in a big bag and put down in different natural landscapes. And it, it's a really interesting juxtaposition with the landscape because it's so incredibly unnatural looking. It looks almost like a UFO just landed which is very strange because this is an object that we accept in different contexts. Whenever I travel, whenever I leave the country, whenever I go visit friends, I always bring the cube with me as a travel companion and I plunk it down in different spaces all over the world and take pictures of it, almost like tourist photos of it looking absolutely strange in these different environments. At the end of 2008, I worked with a large group of collaborators to produce a fake version of the New York Times. And what this was, it was a utopian version of the New York Times. And so it was filled with good news. And so it was filled with all of these stories about what would happen if we lived in a world where the things we wanted actually came true. We tried to tackle everything from large to small. Um, and in our brainstorming meetings, we'd all get together and we'd say, well, wouldn't it be great if? And so we just put all of those stories into a newspaper and decided to make it official by printing a million copies of them and distributing them all over New York City one morning. So we were hoping for, you know, maybe five seconds of like true belief before people became suspicious and said, wait a second, you know, this is too good to be true. Reactions to the paper were generally positive. People got it. They understood that you know the first step to making these sort of changes in democracy is getting people thinking and talking about it. I, my main role with the paper was to make it look convincing. I did some of the, the research for the typographic elements. I worked on all of the ads. The main question we wanted to address with the ads is, what would advertising look like in a perfect utopian future? You know, they're not going to be selling a whole bunch of junk that people don't need. And so the ads really reflect the idea that these big corporations who have done bad in the past are trying to right their wrongs.
Right now we're setting up for a shoot at um, the fabulous Crest Hardware store in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. And so I have my tripod set up and I have my camera mounted on top of it. And I'm just setting up the shot, um, trying to get these aisles structured in the composition like a canyon sort of that we're looking down. The idea for this project really came about from my desire to make very surreal photographs. You know, photographs that you look at and you assume that they're real and you assume that they're really taking place. But when you see what's actually happening in them, it's a completely preposterous situation. A common element through all of these different photos to keep them consistent is the, the composition. I'm using very strict one-point perspective. So all of the horizontal lines in the composition converge to a single point. And then it's at that single point where I arrange my prefabricated prop. Thus this inanimate object becomes sort of the hero of the composition. It sort of anthropomorphizes these objects in a very humorous way because they are very lopsided and springy and um, I've taken great pains to make all of the props very uh, awkwardly shaped so they have a real personality unto themselves. It's the sound of a happy camera. Brooklyn Independent Television on the BCAT TV Network.